Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley here for Pink Fresh Studio. Thanks for joining me today. Today I'm here to show you that orange is not just for fall. I have a fabulous orange color palette for you that's not going to feel like fall at all. And I am bringing in some beautiful Pink Fresh Studio oranges, some greens, as well as an aqua accent to kind of really freshen up this color palette for fall. I'm going to be using a lot of orange and black so that aqua is really going to play an important role. And I'm going to be using the Pink Fresh Studio Poppy Mix Rubber Cling Background Stamp for my card kind of focal image here. So I'm putting this into my Misty Stamping Tool and I'm removing the black foam pad from my Misty Stamping Tool. You'll need to do that when you're using these Rubber Cling Background Stamps. Now I'm inking up my stamp with a slow drying black ink and I am going to stamp this on to some Hammer Mill Smooth White cardstock. I'm using my stamp press tool to make sure I got the entire image transferred. And then I'm gonna take this out of my Misty Stamping Tool and I'm going to add some clear embossing powder. This is going to give me a rich black, fine embossed line. It's gonna be so fine, you're gonna love it. <laughs> But you kind of have to be careful when you're using orange and black for spring, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay towards the lighter side of the oranges. And as I mentioned before, bring in that touch of aqua and it's really going to feel like a fresh spring color palette. So now I'm going to go ahead and start doing my ink blending. I'm using the coordinating poppy mix layering stencils. There are several stencils in this set. I forgot to count. <laughs> But I'm starting out with these large poppy images and I'm ink blending those in some peach fuzz ink. Then I'm going to move on to my second stencil here and I'm using apricot or if some of you like to say apricot, you can say that too. I say apricot. <laughs> and I'm going to ink blend kind of the detail layers of these florals in that. Now I moved back to the peach fuzz ink to ink blend the smaller florals that are on the same stencil. I didn't do any masking. I was just careful where I put the ink. They're all oranges, so it's not too big of a deal. Now for the greens, it's really important that I don't get too dark because that's gonna pull my color palette down. So I am using the key lime to bring a punch of bright green to this. And then I am going to blend in the center of these flowers using the licorice ink. Now, I chose licorice for the center of these flowers because I live in California. Poppy is the California state flower. And most of the poppies I see have a black center. So I'm going to use that there. I'm bringing in the apricot once again and blending in the detail layers on those smaller florals that are on this stencil as well. And you can see that punch of really bright green. Now for the next set of flowers, I'm using the apricot as my lighter color, and then I'm going to move into a deeper, darker, richer orange. I'm going to stay away from too much of the dark. I'm not shying away from using it completely, I'm just not going to use a lot of it. Now for the shading on my leaves, I did use olive, and I went over the lines into that flower just a little bit. <laughs> You can use a smaller blending brush to control it. If you really want some control, you can do some masking, but I wasn't, I wasn't down for that today. So you can see the larger areas of this flower or the darker areas of these other flowers. I'm using the Clementine ink. Now I needed a third green, but as I mentioned before, I didn't want to get too dark. And so this one, I'm using the fresh pear ink and that's going to give it a nice fresh look. Now I did grab the persimmon because I felt like the center of these florals needed a boost. So I added a little persimmon to my darker flowers and then I went back in with the clementine on the center of the lighter flowers just to add a little punch. And then I colored in the background with an aqua copic marker. And look how fresh and spring that looks. It kind of reminds me of the art that you see with like oranges and the aqua background. Now at this point, I really thought I was gonna use this gorgeous kind of aqua or blue colored 
foil to do my sentiments. And so I'm going ahead and foiling these. This is the Lots of Love and Love You Most Hot Foil Sentiments from Pink Fresh Studio. I'm using my Gemini foil press today and a glimmer foil. So I'm using it on the medium heat setting. I set my timer for about a minute. And when that timer went off, I ran that through my Gemini Junior to press the foil onto the cardstock. And I got a gorgeous foiled image. Now this foil is absolutely gorgeous. But when I die cut them out and I put them on the card front, I kind of felt like there wasn't enough punch. Like they didn't stand, they do stand on their own, but they didn't like hold their own on this. And so while it's a very beautiful combination, I did end up changing this up to black. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and die cut this background using the nested hexagons. I thought this was a kind of fun way to use this background. And then I went ahead and foiled these sentiments one more time using the black foil that comes in the combo of the white and the black from Spellbinders that's also available in the Pink Fresh store. This has almost like a toner black quality to it. It is hard to explain unless you've seen it in person, but it is absolutely gorgeous and it just packs a punch. And so I really thought that this was the way to go as far as the sentiments go. I just, it just felt, it felt better to me. <laughs> now I'm going to take some really beautiful kind of aqua colored cardstock and my dainty plaid background stamp from Pink Fresh Studio, I'm gonna ink this up using some Versamark ink, and I prepped the surface of that aqua cardstock with my powder tool. And this is another way you can use those cling stamps. You can actually leave it right on the surface of your desk and flip your panel over onto the stamp and then cover that with a scrap piece of paper. Hold one hand where you're kind of holding the cardstock in place and then rub all over that to transfer the ink. Now, if I know that I'm not gonna stamp something twice, this is the method I most often use. But if I'm trying to get a really deep, dark black image, I'll often use my Misty stamping tool so that I can stamp it multiple times if needed. Now I added a little bit of clear embossing powder over that and now I'm heat setting it. This is going to give this panel some texture so that it just, it, you know, it just gives it a little oomph, you know? I always like to look for areas where I can add just a touch of texture or a touch of dimension or a whole lot of dimension sometimes <laughs> to kind of level up my cards a little bit. Now I stamped a kind of supporting sentiment here on some orange cardstock, and I am going to adhere this lots of love sentiment. That's the one that I settled on to that orange strip of cardstock, just kind of overlapping that L onto the strip. And then from there, I'll trim it down. Now I did also die cut this beautiful leafy piece from some vellum to give it a little more, like I said, texture on top of this printed kind of panel that I've created, I kind of often will layer in some vellum pieces just to kind of add just a touch of something, something. And then I'm going to add a few layers of plain white die cuts behind this to give it some dimension. So you can see how this is all coming together really nicely. I have a gorgeous sentiment to layer on top of my gorgeous background. Now I did use my scissors to trim that at an angle and then I am going to go heavy handed with the foam adhesive because I like big cards and I cannot lie. <laughs> so I added my hexagon on there with a little bit of foam adhesive and then I'm adding my sentiment on top of that kind of down towards that lower right you know it's not really a corner of the hexagon but maybe it is. <laughs> And then I added some of the Butterscotch Glitter Drops from Pink Fresh Studio to give this a little shine. Now, I'm going to tell you something like the real truth. If I would have had black ones, I might have used those. And this is the story of how I created a color palette featuring orange for spring that doesn't feel fall at all. <laughs> black and orange, you have to be careful with. But keeping it light and bright and adding that pop of aqua really does make this card feel nice and fresh for spring. Now, as always, I will have links to the featured products used in this project in the description at YouTube. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure you check there. 
I also just want to take the opportunity to thank you for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here on this YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the fabulous paper crafting and card making video tutorials shared here. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.